Hi everyone, it's now 24th of September 2013 and uh, they've just released VMware vSphere 5.5. So I just wanted to run through a very quick video on uh, installing ESXi 5.5 as the baseline um, and then later on in some additional videos we'll look at uh, upgrading to vSphere 5.5 with vCenter. Uh, the SQL databases, etc. Uh, and we'll probably also look at a um, new install as well. So we'll cover vCenter, um, single sign-on. Uh, we'll cover the SQL database, like I mentioned before. So, uh, yeah, just for now on this video, very quick video, um, installing ESXi 5.5. Um, then we'll go through and install the management client. Um, in 5.5, you'll see that VMware are pushing greatly at using the web client from here on in. Um, if you've just got an ESXi installation, then obviously you're going to use the client, but once you've installed your vSphere suite uh, with vCenter, SSO, web interface and everything, um, I think later on down the track there probably are not going to be any client or the client's going to be very limited and all the new features that are going to be added into future releases are going to be inside the web interface. So just one thing as we're waiting here for uh, ESXi to load up, um, there is a minimum of four gigabytes of memory. If you try to put anything less than four gigabytes, uh, it'll complain and basically will not install. So here we're presented with the welcome screen for ESXi 5.5 installation. Let's press enter on that. Um, just one thing to note actually before I continue is the uh, compatibility guide. Um, it notes the URL there on the screen so be sure to check that out. Uh, make sure your, your hardware, especially if this is going into production, that your hardware is compatible. Uh, if it's just for labs, it, like it says here, it's going to install on mostly anything. So um, here we'll just press enter and we'll have the end user license agreement so we'll just uh, hit F11. So in this screen I've just presented in my virtual machine, I'm just running uh, VMware Workstation. So in my virtual machine for this ESXi server, I've just presented 15 gig local disk. So it's picked that up. Uh, we want to install ESXi onto that disk. So uh, if you have multiple disks there, you can move the arrow up and down and select which disk you'd like to install ESXi on. So we've only got the one, so I'm just going to press enter here. I'll use the US default as the keyboard layout. I'll give my ESXi server a root password and I'll just type it again to confirm and press enter. So here we'll just confirm the installation. So ESXi 5.5 will be installing onto this disk uh, that it sees on VMHBA1. Uh, it's a local disk. Um, it doesn't have any LUNs or fiber channel or NFS or anything connected to it. Um, purely a local disk attached to the server. So um, I'm going to hit F11 and the installation process will begin. The installation is now completed. So what we're going to do is just press enter and we'll let the machine reboot. And then we'll go into some of the configuration of ESXi 5.5. Okay, so ESXi 5.5 has uh, booted up now. As you can see, I've got a DHCP address from uh, my DHCP server, 192.168.1.234. There's also an IPv6 address here. So what I want to do is I want to press F2 and I want to customize my uh, ESXi server. So I'm going to enter in my root password and just run through a few of the options. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I can uh, configure my password. Now I want to go into configure management network. And as you can see in here, if I click on uh, network adapters, I've only got one network adapter uh, installed at the moment. So that's this one here. And if I press spacebar, I can select and deselect this. Uh, if I press escape, I go back to the menu. In VLAN, I can set a VLAN ID. If I'm uh, trunking, I'm connected to a switch that's doing VLAN tagging. I'll set my VLAN ID here for, for management. Uh, in IP address, uh, sorry, in IP configuration, uh, I can select here to use a dynamic IP address. 
or I can select here to use a static IP address. So I'll uh, sw switch it over to static and I'll have the same IP address uh, 192.168.1.234, my subnet mask and my gateway. In the IPv6 configuration, so here I can enable or disable IPv6 and then I can uh, select underneath here to do not use automatic configuration, use a DHP stateful or use ICMP stateless configuration. So there are the options for IPv6. If we escape, go back to the menu, DNS configuration. Well, my DNS server is 192.168.1.1. I can put an alternate DNS server in here and I can give my host a uh, host name. So I'll just give it VM host onevmlablocal and I'll hit enter and for custom DNS suffixes I'll enter in my vmlab.local domain so my vmlab.local domain if you haven't seen any of my other videos is uh, basically just a Windows uh, 2008 slash 2012 um, active directory domain uh, named vmlab.local um, so with that I'm just going to press OK and now I'll escape and it'll ask me do I want to apply the changes if I apply the changes the management network will restart so I'll just select uh, I'll just hit on Y OK I'm now I've configured my management network so from here if we continue on I can uh, restart the management network uh, I can do a test of the management network so in testing I can just ping a few IP addresses or I can actually resolve a host name. Later on when you install vCenter and you start to play around with uh, standard switchings or uh, vSphere distributed switches or Nexus 1000 Vs uh, and you make a mistake somewhere along the line or your switches are not configured correctly or whatever uh, you might come into the situation where you lose network connectivity to your ESXi host so if you do that you can come into this menu and you can restore your network settings restore the standard switch and restore a virtual distributed switch as well you can configure the keyboard we'll go back go back to the options of what we saw during the setup in troubleshooting options we can enable the ESXi shell uh, so the ESXi shell is actually accessed through the console here we can enable SSH so we can SSH to the server and we can modify timeouts for the shell and for SSH and here we can also restart the management agents in this menu we can view the system logs so all I do is I select this menu and I hit one two three four five or six depending which log I want to view so for example if I want to view my VM kernel log I'm going to press number two and I jump in and I can see my VM kernel log and to exit out of this I just hit Q and the next one I can view support information so this is some information about the server uh, I hit page down go to the second page and in our last option we could reset the entire configuration back to factory default and I just I just want to show you um, in the console here back in the options where we had the choice to enable the ESXi shell so from here if I just press alt F1 I'll jump into the ESXi shell um, once it's enabled you'll be able to log in username and password and you'll get to a hash prompt there and you can start doing your CLI commands um, to get out of this and go back to the the original screen it's alt F2 and I'm back here again I've now switched over to my Windows 2012 server which is what I'm going to be installing the vSphere client on so first up we just want to go to Internet Explorer and just go to the IP address of my ESXi server and accept the certificate and here we have a few options so basically I want to go and download the vSphere client I can also go to download vCenter which as you can see in the bottom left hand corner redirects you to VMware and also the vSphere documentation redirects you to VMware on the right hand side you can install the vSphere remote command line these three links also redirect you over to VMware and you can also browse the data store from this host and then you have a few SDK options down the bottom right hand corner here so we're going to click on download vSphere client 
and as you can see in the bottom I've already downloaded it uh, just to save time because it is 380, oh, 348 megabytes so um, I've placed that on the desktop so what I'm going to do is just cancel out of that and close the Internet Explorer and we'll just uh, kick start the installation so I'll just click OK here and on the welcome screen here I'm just going to click next it's a pretty straightforward installation I'll accept the license agreement click next I'll just install to the default location and uh, click install the installation is now completed so I'm just going to click on finish as you can see on the desktop here I've got my vSphere client so I'm just going to double click on this I'm going to put in the IP address Two, three, four. my root username and password and click login and I'll just install this certificate so I don't get prompted again and just click ignore and I'm on an evaluation license so that's going to last 60 days if I click on inventory you'll see here is my ESXi host and to start creating virtual machines you would just right click new virtual machine and run through the wizards so I'm going to wrap up this tutorial here just wanted to do a quick run through on uh, ESXi 5.5 for those of you that have installed uh, 5.1 and 5 like I said before it is very very similar uh, the installation process so um, we've gone through that we've shown you how to get your ESXi server up and running and uh, connected so thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video